prophecy that God gave to me. Look at 2020. It's the year. Amen. It's the year of God or the time of God. And the plow has hit the ground. Things will look messy. But the dry places must be turned over so that the dew may be brought forth. I will turn your sorrow to joy. I will turn your mourning to laughter. And I will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I must stir things up that I might bring a refreshing to my people, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Now we know why God is doing it. Because God promised that he came to destroy the yoke of the enemy. He came to give you a time of refreshing in the, way, in the ways of Christ that you might know him in the power of his resurrection. Amen. So everybody say that things are getting ready to change. Come on. Everybody say it. Things are getting ready to change. Praise the Lord. What used to work is not going to work. What you used to do, you're not going to be able to do. Everything is getting ready to change. You can't stop it. It's changing. In fact, nothing can stop a change. Change happens every day. Every day is a new day to the Lord. And so every day, we need to engage the change or empower ourselves about what God is getting ready to do. Amen? Amen. In fact, Isaiah 43 says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and it shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness, and the rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters to the wilderness, and rivers to the desert, to give drink to my people, my chosen people. Amen. God said, change is coming. He said, when you see the fig tree bloom, know that this generation will not pass until all these things come to pass. We see a change happen in the natural realm all the time because the power of God's word is stolen in the earth and Jesus was born in the fullness of time and we see the impact of certain people in different dispensations of time of humanity that have embraced something, embraced something and had the courage and the boldness to bring it forth to make it happen. And God's word says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Come in. I want to tell you, I don't care what the church looks looks like right now. I don't care what's going on in your life. Everything in your life is subject to change. Praise the Lord. Everything is going to change. Praise the Lord. You can't stop it. I can't stop it. There's nothing I can do. But what I have to do is I have to embrace the change will determine what's getting ready to happen in my life. Are you hearing me? It's going to change. You can't stop it. It's inevitable. It's getting ready to happen. And it's going to, it's going to happen and it's going to determine what you're getting ready to do, where you're getting ready to live, where you're getting ready to go. Everything is getting ready to change. So you might as well decide and embrace the change and determine that you're going to get the most out of what God is getting ready to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The mission never changes. Amen. But the process always changes. Praise the Lord. Are you hear me? So you hear me? So today you can do what you're doing today. Amen. What well, change tomorrow? Just like I've always said, you can you can change the process of the message, but you can never change the message itself. Jesus is Lord. Amen. We can change the method how we go fishing, but fish are always going to be fish. Fish are always going to be in the pond. In the same way, we've got to embrace this. Because we have to know it's going to happen. And if I don't do something right now, then I'm not going to be ready, amen, for what's getting ready to happen. And I love this because I was listening to another gentleman that I respect that was prophesying. And he said, this is a year, amen. And he basically said the same thing about the plow coming into the ground. But he said, it's a year of preparation, getting ready for what God is getting ready to do. Are you hearing me? Amen. So he knows it's happening, but are you going to be ready when it happens? 
Are you? Because when preparation time meets the door of opportunity, great things happen. And how many of know God wants something great to happen in your life this year? Come on, don't you feel it? God wants to give you a breakthrough this year. God wants to make your dream and your vision a reality this year. He wants every man to get saved this year. He wants your family that's lost to come in the house of God. He wants to see those things you've been crying about, the things you've been praying about. He wants to make them a reality. Amen. And I love this because the plow is hit the ground and the plow is going deep and it's breaking, breaking the crusted ground on the top and it's bringing new fresh soil to the top. There's going to be a new revival and a new move of God. Amen. Are you hearing me? A new church is coming out of this old church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not like the old church. It's the new church. What? But behold, I do a new thing. But we must engage it. We must embrace it. We must be determined that we're going to make the changes that need to be made. You see, a lot of people feel that change is a bad thing. Amen. But you see, you must change your mindset that new is not a bad thing. Everybody, how many of you like to drive a brand new car? How many of you like when you get a new haircut? How many of you like when you get new shoes or new clothes? How many like it when you get a big new diamond ring? How many all like it when you get new stuff? Do you not pray about it? God, help me to get financially rich. How many all like a lot of money? Come on, praise the Lord. How many all like good things? Amen. That's change. So it's not change that you're afraid of because you love things to change because you love new things. But what changes is, is the why. Why do things change? You need to understand why you need something. You want a new car because you need a car transportation that's dependable. Praise the Lord. So we have to realize that there's things that God has for us that are important and valuable, and there's things that are not. But you've got to come to the knowledge because we're dying of lack of knowledge that God has a plan for you, and it's a good plan, a plan of prosperity and a plan of peace. Amen. Amen. And it knew is not a bad thing. Amen. And quit waiting for everybody to come in agreement with you. Praise the Lord. And realize that new is not bad. It's good. It just has to be a God move instead of a man move. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because if I'm in God's time and I'm embracing a God move, then something good is getting ready to happen out of it. God said there's a God move that's coming that no matter what looks like it's barren, it's getting ready to be fruitful. No matter what's been gone away, don't look at what the enemy's been doing. Don't let yourself be defeated by the things that people are doing. Because I'm telling you, everything is subject to change. Because God is in this time and he's in this movement. And there's no weapon formed against you that will prosper. If you abide in him and his word abides in you, there is no thing that you will ask that is too hard for God. This is a God time. Amen. Abraham was in a God time. Moses was in a God time. It wasn't popular. It wasn't what his family wanted. But it's what he needed to be. And when he did, he met the needs of all the people. David was in a God time. Jesus was in a God time. John was in a God time. I'm telling you, we're in a God time. And I don't care what it looks like. I'm telling you, God is moving and he's shifting and he's going to call for a spiritual awakening in this hour, in your life, in the church, in America, and in the world. Amen. 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 You see, how you embrace change. Amen. Let's go to Philippians 3, 12 to 14 first. Amen. Not as though I had already attained, either were I already perfected, but I follow after it that if I may apprehend that which was also apprehended in Christ Jesus Christ, brethren, I count myself to I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are in front of me. I press towards the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. You see, how you 
embrace change will determine what's getting ready to happen in your life. Oh, come on, somebody. Because you see, you can start crying. You can go to the back of the room. You can start mourning. You can start blaming everybody. But you see, don't gripe about what you allow and never complain about what you tolerate. Woo, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Quit griping about everything because you're the one that allowed it. Quit tolerating it because you're the one that's been tolerating it and you knew it needed to change. God's been talking to you about it, but you haven't been doing anything about it because you've been tolerating it because you said, well, I just let it be alone. But the reality is you can't let it be alone. Amen, because that little fox is spoiling your vine. And it's time for us to get kingdom focused and get the little foxes out of our life and realize that God's got a greater purpose and a greater plan for me. And I want my destiny. I want it to come to pass. So therefore, my eyes are focused. My energy is focused on one thing. And it's easy to offer and to finish of my faith. And I am determined to receive that prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, There had no temptation taken you, but as such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able, but with temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You see, problems in your life are nothing but doors of opportunity for a God move. I know nobody wants to hear that. You see, without a problem, you would never realize that you had a problem. But it's the problem when you identified it that you needed to start working on it and determine you're going to do something about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And what are you going to do about it? You're going to do a God thing about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is it always going to be popular? No. Is it God directional? Yeah. Will it always win? Yeah. You'll always get the victory through your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Regardless of what you feel, regardless of what emotions are saying, you need to realize that God has called you and he has a specific purpose for you. He has a destiny for you and he has a reason that you're here and there's a reason that God's going to work out whatever it is that needs to be worked out that you might begin to have what God said you can have. So therefore, problems are going to happen. Amen. And what we're going to have to do is identify those problems because you recognize that those problems are because I tolerated something or I allowed something to happen that I knew I shouldn't been involved in, something that I shouldn't have done, something that's caused this problem to happen in my life, that if I would have been focused in on God, focused in on what God was saying and doing, then the problem would not, I wouldn't know how to face the problem. Amen? Whereas we need to be able to see clearly the problem at hand. Why? Amen. Amen. Let me get back here. So, change is inevitable, but process is a choice. If you're not ready to embrace the change, then you're not ready for the process to obtain it. Amen. Remember this. Romans 10, 8 and 9. But what we say that the word is not thee, even in thy mouth and it is in the heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in the heart that thou hast raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Saved from what? Saved from problems, saved from fears, those things that you're facing, saved from the unknown. Amen. And God is wanting to take you into some unknown areas, uncharted areas. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to love the part when I get to the end of this. Amen. He wanted to take us to a place we've never been, to do things we've never seen and never heard, but we're so focused in on the problems and we're so focused in what everybody's saying that we forgot that God is with us and if God be for us, who can be against us? That we are more than conquerors through him. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Jesus said in the world you have tribulation, but he said be of good cheer. I have overcome 
the world. But change is a process. Amen. It's a process of recognizing things, recognizing things around you. Because if you cannot, you cannot change what you cannot say. Praise the Lord. So faith come up by hearing. What is the word? The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So therefore it lights the problems in my life. Conviction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Conviction is what reproving me of sin. What does sin do? Separates me from the love of God. Separates me from the plan of God. It allows the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy. But the word came to give me life and give it to me more abundantly. So when I get kingdom focused and kingdom principles and I begin to walk in God all of a sudden I start recognizing that God's got something good for me I'm going to praise the Lord and I get my eyes on the gold of the high calling of Jesus Christ I get my eyes on the pride that something's getting ready to change there's a breakthrough happening in my life I might not see it I might not know how it's going to happen but it's going to happen because God said my word will never return void but it will accomplish what I sent it to accomplish in your life. Yeah. How many of you are excited about what God is getting ready to do? Yeah. This is an exciting time to be alive in the church. It's a fearful time if you're not following God. It's a fearful time if you're not all the way engaged in what God is doing. But to those that are engaged in the promises and the work of God, we know that God's got something good for us. He's got our trinities, hidden these treasures inside these earthly vessels. Amen. Everybody say, that's me. Come on. That's me. He that descended and ascended high above all principalities and powers. And what did he do? He gave gifts unto men. There is a gift inside of you. There is a purpose inside of you. There is a reason for everything under the sun. And God's given you the power to work it out. Amen. Amen. Have you ever a song? He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen. I believe that God's not through with you yet, but I believe that we're coming into a time that God's getting ready to refine you, refresh you, rekindle you, and bring you something that is going to totally amaze you. I love to say this. It's going to knock your socks off. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because it's a God move in a God time. And you've got grown weary and well doing, but God said in due season, remember I said, you will reap if you faint not. What God started in you, he will finish. Amen. But we must, everybody look at say, we must grow up. Come on, we must grow up. Amen. We must grow up to the maturity that God has called us to be. Amen. He said it in 1 Corinthians 13, 11 to 12. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only with a reflection in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know him fully, even as I am fully known. I like to prophetically talk about this time, like John the Revelator was on the island of Patmos. The Bible said that John was on the island of Patmos for his testimony's sake. He didn't know the reason why he was there. He just had this assurance from God that you're here for your testimony and I am with you. You might not understand the valley and the crested grind ground over your life. You might not understand why you're going through the things you're going through. But I want to tell you, God is faithful to tell you this. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I am faithful to finish what I started in you. And I am faithful to finish what I said I would do for humanity. And I will cause the greatest revival that I have not seen nor ear heard. I have stored it up for you in this hour. That you might know that I am God and that I am able. Amen. Come on. How many of God is able? Against all the negatives in the world. Against all the things that we see. God is able to take the dead dry things and call them forth. The barren things in your life to make them fruitful. The problems and the addictions and the habits in your life. He's able to this by a single word, a single move of the spirit. To touch your infirmity and to heal you, deliver you, sanctify you, refresh you, and cause you to have more than enough. I'm telling you, God is with you in this hour, and he's with this church in this hour. 2020, we need to get our vision. We need a kingdom-focused vision.
fixation on kingdom principles of God so that we're ready for the changes that God is getting ready to make. My daily agenda must be doing, must be doing, uh, my daily agenda must be my long-term goals. So change what hap change what happens daily, and you'll uh, well, change what <laughs> so change happens daily, not in the moment. Are you hearing? Me? So change happens daily as I apply myself to the principles of God. Hey Amen. I'm gonna tell you, you don't get rich overnight. You get rich through a process. Amen. You don't begin to be be something that uh, something of value like E.F. Hutton or somebody that has a lot without a process, but they go through a lot of lows. They go through a lot of high. You've been getting processed. Amen. He's been transforming you little by little into the image of God. He's been getting you ready and all the things you've gone through. God said, I'm going to take with the enemy at harm. And he said, I'm going to turn it to your good. Amen. Amen. So what do we got to do? We got to start changing our daily agenda so that God can give us something new. Come on, somebody. We got to change what we're doing on a daily process so that God can give us something new. Because if we don't change what we're daily doing, we're going to find ourselves like insanity reaping the same things we had before. So that means we've got to do something different. And one of the things that I can do is because, I mean, I'm always saying <coughs> attitude is your altitude. Attitude is the inward feeling or the expression that has an that has an outward action or expression. Or what does what goes on in the inside will always come out on the outside. He's in you the hope of glory. So the change we're talking about is the change on the inside, not on the outside. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the reason why I said, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. God is processing us into the last revival the world has ever seen. The church has been going through a process, and we haven't understood the process, but you know what? We never will. Amen. You see, God's given us the ability to work in the process, but he didn't tell us how to do it. Praise the Lord. His work is a lamp and it guides us, but we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trouble. We have to what? By examining those things that we're doing, analyzing the movements we are, so that God can give us something new, something refreshing, so something good can happen to me. Amen. Amen. You see, Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved of God, God, workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing word. the word of truth. Yeah. You see, if I begin to start embracing the truth, the truth will set me free. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Whoo, praise the Lord. So we find that Jesus is our example of how to please God. And he is the way, amen, for every gift and every blessing that we want. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Embracing the change by engaging or energizing myself to make bold moves. Amen. Somebody say bold moves. To the changes that are going around. And I was thinking about this. You know, there's things in your life you can tweak your life. You can, you can study. You can do this. You can do that. But I was thinking over my life and over our church life. I was thinking about the moments in our ministry that we engaged with such energy that we took what man said no and we turned it into a yes. Which is one of the things that God said to me. God's word does not remember when Abraham was called out for world Chaldees. His family told him he was crazy, but he went ahead and left and he followed God and looking for a city and builder and maker that was God, contrary to what everybody was saying. In the same way we find Noah in the middle of a desert, amen, in the middle where there's no water, he begins to start building an ark and everybody tells Noah, 
you're crazy. That was a bold move that energized a complete generation and saved somebody. Are you hearing me? Over our life of our church, we have energized many times. I remember when we came from a tent and we were having church services in a tent and we did we went to the army for the tent. We went to the army building. It was a miracle just to raise a hundred dollars a week. And from that place, we turned around and came out on the highway and God showed us the church and we made a bold move. I mean, our bank account in the red, but we made a bold move that God was going to give it to us and we stepped out by faith and we made that move and we went up on the highway and God gave us a church. Praise the Lord. We went in. It was a lot of work. It took a lot of engagement. It took a lot of passion. It took a lot of investment. But out of that bold move, we saw families come to the house of God. Out of that bold move, amen, we began to, we began to see growth and we began to see things happen. And the next thing you know, we made a bold move and said there's not enough room in here for us to grow, but we can't afford a church, so let's make a bold move. And I was praying and God said, go to the high school. And so we went to the high school. I am being taken. It was a lot of work, but we saw our congregation double on side. We saw our church energized. We saw God. And then all of a sudden, we came back from the high school and it looked like we were retreating but sometimes you got to go down to get back up we came back to the church and from the church we decided that we wanted a piece of property we wanted to build our own house of God we energized ourselves with just a few and we energized and believed God and we came here and we bought this property and we energized and made a bold move and started building building we made a bold move and built a Joseph house before we built the church contrary to what everybody said you should do. We made a bold move and God blessed us coming in and God blessed us out. Amen. Going out. We made a bold move and they said, you can't feed that many. You can't do that. And we made a bold move. The next thing you know, we're feeding 13 cities and a thousand families a month. Got more food coming. Energizing. Amen. Seven or eight churches now. We're energizing them through that bold move of taking our buses and going to the field and knocking on the door. We caused a revival to happen because we energized because we recognize a door of opportunity. Bold moves cause God to begin to move. You see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We are sitting in our backs against the wall. Don't wait for somebody to give you the breakthrough. Don't wait for somebody to make your bold move. But you got to make a bold move. you got to make a statement. you got to make a decree of God. you got to believe God for what God's getting ready to happen. From that, we sit in here. Look at the enemy was trying to stop us. And we were in the back and I was praying. And God spoke to me. I'm going to have you feed the nations. Next thing I know, God starts sending food. We start for the next few years. We start going all over the world. Feeding millions and millions of kids. Networking with ministries all over the world. Gone to the world. And we start building, building. Another bold move that people say, you're crazy. You need to be more inward instead of outward. But I'm telling you, everywhere Jesus went, he preached and he taught and he healed people. They were sick and afflicted. He said, go ye into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. Our problem, our fear, our inability to grip the moment, our inability by looking with our natural eye. We say we can't do it, but my Bible says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm telling you, we've watched bold moves of God when they said we couldn't do it, but yet we did it. Amen. It's been our testimony. But what are we doing now? What are we doing this bold now? We've got a little tweak here or a little tweak there. A tweak is not a bold move. Amen. I love to do the parking lot, but that's not a bold move. A bold move is when you make a statement. A bold move is when you say something that everybody says you can't do it. Because with God, all things are possible. A bold move is not when everybody agrees with you. But it's when God says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Woo! Praise the Lord. Bold moves always happen. When everybody's tired. <laughs> Woo! But bold moves happen because people seize the door of opportunity. They see what nobody else sees. Are you hurting me? You'll never obtain your miracle. Until you can see it. 
You got to see it from the inside. You got to know they can know they can know that God is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? When everything says quit, God says get up and stand. When everybody's afraid of the liar, it tells you get down with that fire rock and get down with that slingshot and tell him that he's defiling the army of the living God. One man shut the mouth of life. One man killed the bear. One thing. One person or three people went in the fire and burned and quenched the fire burn. I'm telling you, God's looking for some Paul. He's looking for some James. He's looking for some apostle in this hour that he can use for his glory. Yeah. It's not afraid of this moment. But we'll embrace this change. Because when I start speaking about what God's getting ready to do, most people will not be ready for what God is getting ready to do. But God is going to do it anyway. Are you hearing me? Everybody say, God's going to do it anyway. Amen. Amen. Let's look at what we went over. Let's get out here like a little overview of it. Change is going to happen. Everybody say, change is going to happen. Change is going to happen. Whether you want it or not, it's going to happen. The next thing is mindset. Change is not as bad as you think it is. Praise the Lord. Change is not as bad as you think it is. Three, you cannot change things that you tolerate. Amen. You cannot tolerate sin. You can't follow sin. Walk, what is that? Walk, walk not in the counsel of God in the rest of the way of the sinner, but light yourself in the law of God, and then he will make you like a tree planted like the living water. Your counsel should be from God. Your counsel and your answer should be from the word of God. And if you can't get it from God, you better not do anything at all. You better just find it until you can see what God is doing. Because God's not a man that is going to keep you. He's not a man that he will lie. He said, if my sheep ask, they shall know. Amen. Number four, if you cannot embrace the change, you are not ready for it. If you make that change and you're not ready for it and you haven't embraced it and you don't know why it's happening, you don't know what's going to happen and you're just stepping out there, I want to tell you, you're going to fall and everything around you is going to fall. Because you have no reason. Habakkuk 2. Write the vision planted upon the tablet. And him who readeth it understands it. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you God's going to make changes. But you should know what the change is. Amen. You need to count the cost of building the building. You don't go try building the building after you've gone out. You go out because you've planned the building. You've got a house plan. Amen. You get bids on how much it's going to cost to build the house. You find out. Amen. You gather information about the change. Yeah. You cannot change what you cannot see. Yeah. If I can't see it, remember when he told Ezekiel, can you see it? He said, yeah. I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, you've seen good, Ezekiel. And then why? Because the almond tree is the first tree to bud. It's bud. And God's saying, I'm getting ready to send forth a bud in your life. I'm getting ready to send a blessing into your life. You've seen good. The blind man said, what do you see? Jesus, amen. Well, remember, he said, I see trees. Jesus turned around and prayed for him again. And now as the eyes are open, he can see. Sometimes you can't see, but you need to wait on the Lord because God's going to give you the sight to see. Praise God, you hear me? You get that? Amen. He couldn't see, he saw trees. For the second time God prayed for them, the second word came and he saw clarity. He saw what he needed to do. Six, my daily agenda tells me my goals. You've heard me say this to you back before about John Maxwell. John Maxwell said, they asked him two men and said, wanted to meet with him. They had a business going on. They said, we want you to, we want you to spend the day with us at our business. And we want, want you to tell us uh, what is the one thing? What is it that we need to do? And John Maxwell said, I don't have time to spend all day with you running your business, looking at what you're doing. 
He said, but I will do this. I will meet you for a cup of coffee. And he said, I will sit down with you for 15 minutes. And in 15 minutes, I'll tell you whether you're going to make it or not make it. And the guy looked at him and said, no way. How are you going to do that? You don't even, you're not looking at my books. You're not looking, you're not looking at this. You're not looking at that. He said, all I got to hear is what you're talking about. Because if you're talking about all the problems, then you've already missed all the answers. If you're complaining all the time, you ain't got no joy. If you ain't got no joy, you ain't got no strength. If you ain't got no strength, you don't know what you're doing. So the best thing you can do is go back to bed, pull the covers over your head, and wait till you decide to get up with a different attitude. Because the attitude you got today spells failure. And what you're trying to do spells failure. Quit trying to put God in the middle of a failure. God's not a failure, God. God is a gold God. God is a God of success, of victory, of joy, of strength. Amen. 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 Embracing the change by engaging or energizing a bold moves. Dr. Kimball, I noticed the other day, I didn't even know she did it. She made a bold move. She went back to college and got her college degree. Yeah. <laughs> she took me by shock because I didn't even know she back to got it, but it was a bold move. It was a bold move, and nobody might not have understood it. Why are you doing it? You don't have to work a job. You take care of kids. But it was a bold move. God's wanting you and I to do some bold moves this year. Are you hearing me? We're going to engage. No, oh, this goes right. We're going to engage this year. Like we have never engaged before in the history of this ministry. We're cranking up the volume to a degree we have never been in the history of our man, of our ministry. We're going to another level, and I want you to go, but if you can't go, then you can stand out and be the spectator on the side, but we are going. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I can't make you go, but we are going. Yeah. We are going to possess the gates of the enemy. And we're going to make the changes that we need to make to engage the future that we're going in. We've already really read in church. We are already behind. I was listening to a gentleman the other day. And this is what he said. He said, the contemporary church that had the loud music and all the things that it had in it, changed the pews and brought the chairs, all those things it had. It was called the contemporary church because it was it was going against the traditional, which was the pews, the chairs, uh, the pews, and the, the normal things that we have in the church. But he said, I'm going to tell you something. The contemporary church today is a traditional church today. Every church has already got chairs. Every church has already got lights and sound systems and drums. They're already there. So I'm going to ask you something. Did we change what's already been done? Or do we try to come up with something new? Come on, somebody. Do we try to find something that will reach this generation? I need creative minds that will energize themselves, that are hungry for a move of God. I need people that are willing to get out of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Without getting out of the boat, nothing new is going to happen. He said, I'd rather have you hot, I'd rather have you cold. Because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew out of my mouth. Amen. Understand this. I'm going to say this to you. The shifting is this. God is sitting in the middle. And God's going to help you go one way. Or God's going to help you go the other way. But there's not going to be anything in the middle. You're not going to be able to stay there. So you're either going to get fired up. Or you're going to get cold as ice. Yeah. There is not going to be a cold church much longer. The cold churches will close so fast. The doors will not even be able to stay open. A hot church, an energized church, we'll see tomorrow. Amen. But it's time for us not to sit back and try to be a maintenance church, but it's time for us to make some bold, expressive moves that energize our community. Woo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Want me to give you one bold move that we can make? Get a highway crossing. All over Kuwait, you know what they say? There's no way the railroad's going to give you that highway crossing. They laugh at us that we put a driveway going down there with lights going down there. Well, I got news for them. 
With God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Come on. I've never stopped working on it. We have surveyed this land. We have finally got our DEQ. All 36 acres now is available to us to build anything we want to build, go anywhere we want to go. Nothing's stopping us from crossing that highway except for our faith to believe that God can do it. If he can do it then, he can do it again. Yeah. How many of y'all believe that? He can do it again. Amen. But I need people of courage. Remember we told Joshua, Joshua, be strong and be courageous for the Lord God is with you. Woo! Amen. Be bold. <laughs> be bold. Be courageous. Be energized. Let's get out of the box. Come on. Let's get out of the box we've been in. And let's energize this community. Energize our family. Energize what we're doing. And let God be God. How many of y'all agree with that today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But to do it, Jesus has to be the center core of the message. Yeah. He preached everywhere and God worked with him. Didn't tell them how to do it. He just said, preach everywhere, Jesus, and I will work with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So God is going to be with us as long as we keep him as a center focus of all our goals, of all the things that we do. What is God's will? That none would perish, but that all would have eternal life. Our focus is, is focusing in on the principles of God, of reaching the lost and meeting the needs of those that are hungry, those that are naked, and those in prison. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And if you do that, amen, I want to tell you, God's going to work with us this hour. I want God to work with us, but I need you. I need you to make the commitment, one for yourself, to energize your family. You see, if your family is not going the direction you want it, the power to change your family is in you. Don't feel that you're powerless, because you're not powerless. The Bible said all power has been given. You can change the direction of your family by changing your daily agenda. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Your daily agenda will begin to start creating a path for things to begin to start happening. Are you hearing me? Listen to what I'm saying. It will create a path that it will be like a magnet and you'll draw them in. Praise the Lord. You will draw them in. Engaging in the church is that evangelism that God has called you and gave every man in here and woman a gifting and talent. And that talent is the power of God to be able to do supernatural things inside an ordinary world. Woo! It's the ability to change your finances. It's the ability to change your family. And that means that you need to energize your spirit. Come on, praise the Lord. You need to energize your spirit. Amen. If you don't energize your spirit, amen, there will be a spiritual awakening in your house. Woo! Praise the Lord. That means your loved ones will get saved. All of a sudden, all the arguing, the fighting, and everything will stop. Why? Because God's not the author of confusion. But we got to get energized for this new bold move that God's getting ready to make. Yeah. What I need from you is a commitment to God. Jesus said, do this as often as you come together. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But you know what you need to do. Yeah. I have some things on here, just some things I wrote down, but I was wanting you to have time. I was going to have you just write down like three or four things that you thought that maybe somebody needed to do if they were wanting to energize their house for God. I just wrote up a few of them, prayer, studying the Word of God, confession of faith, praise and worship. I just wrote down this going, think about what it is that you need to do that you haven't been doing that will energize your family and energize your community. We made an investment this week in our church. We're getting ready to Bible school. I know everybody's been frustrated that it had got online with nobody more than ourselves, but we made an investment and we bought a computer with the ability to be able to take us on to be able to put the school on. So it's getting ready to start. Praise the Lord. I did that, but it's getting ready to start. 
And we're also going to have classes on different things that you can do for your marriage, different things that you can go. Because we're living in such a baby, but a daily society. We can't just engage people on Sunday. Sunday, are you hearing me? We got to engage people every day of their life. When they have time to turn on their phone and get on it and be able to hear the word of God. Amen. We got to engage them right where they're at. We're not engaging for how many people we have on Sunday. We're engaging for how many lives that we change. We are a kingdom church. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. We are a kingdom church. And so I need you to help me in this engagement that we can empower the lives of people. And I believe that if we empower them and give to them, then people will give back. Amen. Amen. When you value them, they will value you. When you reach for them, they will reach for you. When you touch them, they will touch you. Amen. Amen. Jesus came and became flesh to dwell among us to touch us. I need everybody to come forward now. We're going to do communion this morning.